in color. The continuing story of Peyton Place. Tonight, the role of Martin Peyton will be played by Wilfred Hyde White. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Yesterday, Jack Forrest, who called himself Jack Chandler, was shot to death by police while trying to escape from a rooming house hundreds of miles from Peyton Place. Very few people who had come into contact with Chandler felt regret at the news. And one man, Leslie Harrington, felt greatly relieved. For Chandler had a long-standing hold over him. And with Chandler's death, he believes himself released from that hold forever. you want? Hi, Les. Less, less, less. It's a matter of common courtesy to wait in a man's outer office, isn't it? I can't believe it. You don't remember me. That's right. Oh, come on. You remember Eddie? Eddie Jacks? Oh, well, I, I, I wanted to catch you before the day started. Listen, I know what a businessman's day is like with phone calls and secretaries and everybody shouting. No? Go on. Sit down. It's your office. Your chair. Thanks. I know how surprised you must be. It's been a long time. 18 or 19 years, I guess. What are you doing in town, Eddie? Well, a man gets awful tired moving around. Awful tired. But why come back here? I wanted to get to know my little girl. I wanted to see if there was any help I could give her. Rita doesn't need your help. She and Norman have a fine marriage. They've helped each other in a way neither you nor I ever managed. But still, a man wants to get to know his only child. You're breaking my heart. Come on, Eddie. You can't tell me this is a sentimental journey. It's not your style. Well, a man's style changes, you know? Ah, uh, you're the living proof of that. Say, do you get daily janitorial service here? They do a terrible job. Well, I'm sorry their work isn't up to your standard. I caught a glimpse of you in the park last night. You were with a couple of young fellas, your boys, I guess, huh? I wouldn't have recognized Rodney. He was only this big when I left. And Norman, he was just a toddler. Doesn't that make you feel like an old man? Come on, Eddie, level with me. Why did you come back here now at this particular time? You've never done anything in your life that didn't have an angle. What is it? Mm -hmm. Same old less. Say, what do you know about us being in-laws? That's quite a twist of fate, isn't it? When I was running a tavern, Martin Payton was just a, a magic name. Something that uh, everybody would look up to as sort of being superhuman. And now my little Rita's married to one of his grandchildren. And I'm related to the man. Yes, sir. That's quite a twist of fate. The old man still got his thorns into you? I work for the man. That's funny you should use that expression. That's the same phrase you used when, um... When what? Oh. Nothing. I was just thinking about the old days. I see our friend, uh, Jack Forrest cashed in. That's too bad. He had some good qualities. Really? Name one. Oh, well, loyalty. He'd never blab about something that you trusted him with. You know what I mean? Oh, I know he was a bad boy, but then nobody's all bad, or all good, for that matter. What are you after, Eddie? Come on, let's have it. Not a thing. We're square. I mean it. That time when you and Jack needed a place to talk, and I, I lent you the back parlor. Heck, it, it wasn't as though you didn't take care of me. 
You did, handsomely. You're one of the few guys I've met who stood behind his word 100%. Always. A lot of things have changed since those days, Eddie. It's an entirely different town. I'm not sure it's a town you'd be happy in. Well, I'm not too sure about that myself. I got a lot of catching up to do before I decide. You see, you raised two fine boys. And you're in a position to see that they have the best. Now you take me. I've felt guilty down there every day of my life since I left here. No matter which of the ponies finished first or how good looking the ladies were, I'd think about my kid. I want Rita to have the best, too. I'm sure that you can understand that. You're dreaming. You walked out on Ada. I couldn't have done it without your help. She's not going to let you get within a country mile of Rita. The thing is, the girl must be a little bit curious about her old man, you know what I mean? Probably Ada's poisoned her against me, but a father and daughter, now that's a strong tie. Look at old Mr. Payton and his daughter. Your late um, wife. If I were you, Eddie, I'd think twice before I stayed around too long. Oh, I've done enough to think in the last 18 or 19 years. It didn't get me much. Now there's some things that I've got to do. Look, I know we haven't exactly traveled in the same social circles lately, but being related the way we are, and uh, while well, it was the kids who found each other, we have to sort of um, go along with them. What are you driving at? Well, I'd, I'd take it as a kind gesture if you'd uh, consent to have dinner with me and the youngsters some night, when it's convenient. It'll never be convenient. Well, you don't have to say yes or no now. Just think about it for a while. And maybe I might even do the cooking myself. Those snacks I got together for you and me and Jack Forrest, they weren't half bad. Remember? cellar as far back in the corner as possible. Well, she came to me in tears and said that you insisted on bringing it up here. Oh, I'm so sorry. The last thing I want to do is to upset this house. We do want you to be comfortable. You're Martin Payton's guest. And a soon-to-be wife. So if you'll just forgive Mary. Um, we ended up putting that junk in the cellar after the fire. I think you did a beautiful job decorating the house, Betty. I... It's just that I'm rather fond of old things. Antiques. Oh, Martin Payton said it made him feel 20 years younger after he got rid of that stuff. <laughs> 30. Wonderful. Well, I mean, it's a matter of taste. If a person wants to live in a museum, that's fine. But I just don't happen to. Well, I do think you're depriving yourself of a life, Betty. Just because something is old doesn't mean it's dead. This table, for example. This was made by Sheraton. It was used by the large landowners to keep track of the rent that their tenants pay. You see, there's a, a drawer for each tenant. It's very interesting. Oh, the good homes in England are filled with these things, but they are rather rare here. Have you, uh, have you done much traveling? No, none to speak of. You should get Stephen to take you around a bit. There's so much to see, so much to understand. There's no reason to be trapped in a small town forever. It's very easy to do on your own. You should go to New York. Go to Europe. You'll see so many ways of life that are free, marvelously free. Well, that sounds very nice, but not now. Stephen has to build up his practice. He has a lot on his mind. Betty, I think that, uh, I think you should get Stephen away. Have a little fun together. We have quite a bit of fun right here. Adrian, let me set the record straight. I was wrong about something. It's very obvious now that Mr. Payton brought you here because he decided to marry you. That's true. He did propose some time ago. But when I went to Stephen to start legal proceedings against Dr. Rossi, I did become aware of an attraction. 
I'm afraid, uncomfortably so. Go on. Well, I hope you won't take this wrong. There was, there was nothing said, not a word. It was just a woman's intuition. I didn't want to irritate Martin, and, well, the last thing I want to do is to cause you two any trouble, so I thought perhaps the best thing to do was to find another lawyer. I think you're flattering yourself, Adrian. Stephen would never think of representing you against Mike Rossi for any reason. Maybe not. It was just a question of a look, a certain tone of voice. You know what I mean. Stephen is such a serious man. He's had to work so hard, I don't suppose he ever had a chance to have schoolboy crushes when he was younger. He's just having his now, with a little of the rudeness that goes with it. It's been through my experience that Stephen is only rude to people he doesn't much care for. That may account for the way he treats Martin, but I don't think it accounts for the way he's been treating me. I really don't see much difference. There is one. Adrian, does it do something for your ego to believe that you're the heroine in Stephen's fantasy? Does it do something for your ego to ignore the fact that it's true? about tomorrow's newspaper. Hmm? What? Elliot, are you going to print an article, I mean, a story about uh, my grandfather's engagement? Oh, holy smokes. Don't tell me there's been a change of plans already. And it's true? True. I have a letter here that indicates that... Uh, yeah, yeah. Dear Mr. Carson, Please inform your readers that I have become engaged to Mrs. Adrian Van Leiden of Boston and New York. Mrs. Van Leiden is the widow of the internationally renowned scientist, Dr. Philip Van Leiden. I shall expect to see the announcement of my engagement in tomorrow's paper. If I am satisfied with the tone and the quality of the announcement and with the prominence you give it, I shall entertain the idea of retaining you to print the wedding invitations. Cordially, Martin Payton. <laughs> it's a collector's item. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the woman? No. No, I, I only know what my uh, grandfather's chauffeur... Oh, Friendly Lee Weber. Eh? Yes, Friendly Lee Weber stopped by the garage to say he was on his way over here with that engagement announcement. My, my instinct is not to believe him. Yeah, well, trust your instinct. Tell me, is the uh, bride-to-be a contemporary of your grandfather's? Nobody is a contemporary of my grandfather's. <laughs> Well, looks to me like I'm going to have to give him front page headlines tomorrow. This is hard to believe. Yeah, well. By tomorrow, everybody would have forgotten about Chandler. It's true. Really. I'm kind of glad he's dead, too, because now I don't have to worry what he'd do to Connie or the baby. The only thing is that. Shanna's death closes the last opportunity I'd have of finding out what he knew about Allison. Well, that's if he knew any more about Allison. Oh, he knew. He would have come out in the trial. If there had been a trial. And if there had been a trial. Well, I'd, I'd better get back to work. Have a good day. <laughs> 